Hello, my friends. I hope you guys are having a great day today. Oh, much better today. The um, mail person has already been here today. So hopefully we will have not a whole lot of <laughs> distractions. Um, so I want to go ahead and say hello to everybody on YouTube and Facebook because we're live in bo both places today. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a really quick and easy pair of earrings. <clears throat> now, we know it's winter, um, it's cold, and icicles, if you live anywhere where it's cold, a lot of times you get those icicles, whole nine yards. So, I created these earrings. Um, these earrings, or a version of them, have been around for years and years and years, um, but they're so much, to, so much fun to make, and I just call them the icicle earrings. So, we are going to go ahead and play and have fun with these today. Now, to make these earrings, I actually have kits for them available on my website. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of link some of those here at the bottom so you'll kind of know where they're at on the website. Uh, right now, they're still a brand new product. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom of offthebeatedpathbeadstore.com, you'll see them under the new items category. Um, but I have a Crystal AB. I have a blue version and I have a pink version because you got Valentine's Day coming up. Uh, but we got these absolute beautiful new crystals in. They're a Czech crystal, but they're so pretty. And I thought, okay, we need to make something with these. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to do these. Now, when we do these, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need two head pins. All right. Um, I, you can use a thin head pin or a thick head pin, uh, meaning a thicker diameter or a thinner diameter. The thinner is going to work a little bit better than something that's thicker just because you're using a little tiny four millimeter bead. All right. So you're going to need two head pins. You are going to need about 18 inches of a 22 gauge wire. Now, of course, you can use a thicker wire if you have it. That's completely fine. I just wouldn't use an 18. I would go 20 or below. So just know that. Then I'm going to be using two four millimeter round beads. You can use a bicone, a pearl, whatever you want. I'm going to use two six millimeter round beads. Uh, two, uh, four, six, two, eight millimeter round beads, and then two 10 millimeter rounds. Now, if you don't like a super long earring, that's completely okay. You can just take one of the beads off. So like a 10 or a, you know, an eight, whatever you want just to make them shorter. So it's completely up to you. <clears throat> Only other thing you're going to need is some ear wires and some tools. So today I'm going to be using a basic round nose plier. I'm going to be using some flat nose pliers like this. If you also have bent nose, they work really well. And then I'm going to be using a cutter, just a regular cutter um, to do this project with as well. Uh, it'll be helpful for a ruler if you have a ruler. Um, and that's about it. So one thing that I would love for you to do in the comments, I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know if you guys have enjoyed having a couple of live videos this week rather than filmed videos. Um, what I would love to do this year is kind of have a mix in my normal filmed videos that I do, but also do some fun lives. So if you like the lives, um, please let me know in the comment section. If you don't like the lives, then just don't comment. <laughs> All right, guys, so I am going to switch cameras here. Give me just one second. Here we go. Okay, um, so here are the earrings that I'm going to show you how to do today. Uh, again, they're really, really fun and simple. And so here we go. All right, so you can see here that the finished version here is now this is beads itself just beads itself we're right under two inches okay let me get in the camera here so beadwork itself is just right under two inches okay and then with the ear wire you can see where we're at so um i already have all of them made but what i'm actually going to do the blue one I did not do exactly the way that I wanted them to do. 
So I am actually going to cut them and I'm going to remake it. So let me, let me just do this right quick. Oh, oh, Nadine Miller is watching. Hey, Nadine. And I see our friend Loretta is on this morning. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so you can see here, I've got my four, my six, my eight, and my 10. And again, this can be bicones, it can be rounds, it can be whatever you want, okay? That is the great thing about this project. Now, when I was saying that you wanted some thin head pins, all right, I'm gonna tell you the difference here and let me just grab my little head pin pack. Okay, so first of all, first of all, Lord help me. All right, I'm going to put these two little heads together here. Now, you can see there is a difference in the heads on these head pins. You have one that is a little larger and one that is a little bit smaller. Um, and what we're going to do, if you use this one, it's fine, but it's hard to bend. All right. And then I have this one that's very easy to bend. So I'm going to be using this one here. Um, just because it, I'm using a four millimeter round and it's a little bit harder to, um, to, to deal with if you use a bigger one. You, you'll burst it almost, burst it, bust it, whatever you want to say. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, Gabriella says, it hurts to see you destroying this beauty. <laughs> well, thank you, Gabriella. Um, hey, that's the great thing. You can just pop them right back together. <clears throat> so I'm going to hopefully show you a couple of tips and tricks today that'll be helpful to you. So the first thing, um, I'm going to be using my regular round nose pliers. All right. So you notice on the round nose pliers that they are skinny here. And then as you go down the barrel, they get thicker. So we're going to be somewhere here near the, the front of our piece. And India asked a really great question. Is that a two inch head pin? Yes, these are two inch head pins. Um, even though this is a little tiny four millimeter round, I still like to use a two inch head pin because I, I just do. Okay, so one thing that I do a little bit different, and I actually need to grab a different plier here because I forgot that I had grabbed my thicker pliers. Um, so I'm going to take a smaller pair of my chain nose pliers, or you can use your round nose pliers. But what I want to do is if I take my round nose pliers and I put them in here like I normally do, and I bend the wire straight out at a 90 degree angle, what's going to happen is I'm going to have room right here that I necessarily don't want to have on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these small chain nose pliers and I'm going to grab you can barely see there, just barely right above it. And I'm going to hold the bead and I'm going to turn the wire. All right. So what happens now is you see, instead of having a lot of wire here left from where I would have grabbed them with my round nose wires, now I get a nice flush turn here. All right. So you see that? See how that's nice and flush and it works out really, really well. So here's what I am going to do now is if you want every single loop that you're going to do to be the same size, one really important tip or trick for you, and I'm grabbing me a Sharpie, is if you'll take a Sharpie and mark on the Sharpie where you're going to make your loops. All right. So I'm just going to put a little mark right here. All right. So this will just help me know that if I grab here every single time, I'm going to get the same size loop. All right. So I'm going to grab the wire right there where I made my little marks. <clears throat> and I'm going to bend the wire back over itself like this. Oh, can't get it any. Okay. Now. I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to bend it back so that it starts to make a loop. Now you'll notice that I have not actually gone ahead and um, done a wrapped loop yet. All right. So it's just like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pliers back inside of here. And then I can use my flat nose pliers to grab a hold 
and wrap. Now, when I wrap, I'm going to wrap each wrap right below itself. So it's not going to take but just like one or two wraps to get where I need to go there. Okay. So that is a really, really, really great thing about this. You'll see there, it did not take much of a wrap to do that. So I'm going to take my cutters now. And um, it doesn't matter what kind of cutters you get. I like these. These are actually by Beadalon. Um, I carry these in my online store. Um, these are made for uh, like earrings work great for these or a thinner gauge wire, like a 22 gauge wire. These work really great for, okay? So I'm gonna grab a hold and I'm just going to cut that close. And then if I have anything sticking out, that's funny, look where I was holding that. Uh, if I have anything sticking out, then I'm going to take my pliers and just kind of press that a little bit. And if the loop looks a little wonky or anything like that, I can kind of fix that with those flat nose pliers. So you can see there how my loop looks. Now, the great thing, again, is I know exactly that's the size of loop that I'm going to need and use for each thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler now. And when you purchase the kit, the kit comes with 18 inches of wire. So you are going to cut two inches of wire for each crystal that you do. So I'm going to cut my two inches here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple. Um, you can actually cut them to the same size as your head pin because your head pin is two inches. So you can do that if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and cut me a couple of pieces here. And when you, or you can even just take your pieces together like this, put them side by side and make your cuts. All right. Completely up to you. Do what works easiest and best for you. Okay. So here we go. This part right here is going to be one of those things that you are going to have to practice. Okay. If you're new to jewelry making, especially earrings, this is something that you definitely want to practice. So I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to come down. I'm going to measure it exactly so you'll know. So I'm going to come down about three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to, again, grab right here at the very tips of my pliers. And I'm going to turn that short piece of wire straight out so that it makes a 90 degree angle just like this <clears throat> now again remember i marked my pliers so i'm going to put the pliers in right where i marked them and then i'm going to bend the wire back over itself and i can put the pliers back in there again and you see when i put them in they're right there on that mark they're exactly where they need to be so now i can take this little tip and move it back like this so that I am ready. So India asked a really good question. India said, do you prefer wire working or bead weaving? I like both, but prefer bead weaving. Um, yes, India, I am like you. I do both, um, but I like my bead weaving the best completely. Okay, so what I'm doing so that I can explain myself, not get ahead of myself, um, I'm going to take my four millimeter bead here, that loop that I made, and I'm going to thread it on so that it falls down into my little loop that I have here. Now, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to use my round nose pliers and I'm going to go across the new loop. So you can see here, it's holding this loop. What this will do, this will stop you from losing that perfect circle shape that you've got right now because I've got a perfect circle. So if I put my pliers right here, that is going to stop me from losing that beautiful shape that I have. All right. So now I can take my other flat nose pliers and grab a hold and I can wrap. So again, I'm going to start here, right here at the base of the little neck and then just wrap and thing again about using a thinner wire is that I can only you know do just a couple of wraps and I'm set 
Now, if you're like, oh my gosh, that is way too short for me to deal with, then you can come in about an inch. It's fine. No worries. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to trim that itty bitty bitty piece I had left right there. And again, if I have a piece that's sticking out, I can grab a hold of it and press it in. Now, what this is going to help with, what when we made our little marks here as well, what this is really going to help with a lot is when you are um, doing your earrings, this will make all of our loops the exact same size so that both of our earrings will be exactly the same length and you won't get one that's a little shorter than the other. All right. Um, Nancy Markle actually just posted and she said, hey, Kelly, great to catch you live for a second day. With Meredith. Thank you very much, Nancy. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was on the Beat Along group yesterday teaching how to do crawl. And I had a great time with India. Absolute great time or great time with Meredith. Love her to death. All right. So I'm going to do that same trick because I don't want a ton of wire here for me to have to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm Barely, you can see right there, just barely coming up past the crystal. And I'm going to turn the wire. So again, you see now, instead of having a lot of wire right here above my crystal, I now have that nice straight out wire. Okay. All India said that she loved the live yesterday too. I'm so glad to hear that, guys. Okay. So again, you see there, I'm grabbing on that line that I made. And I'm going to turn the wire. And again, you see, it's still there, still on my mark. And then I'm going to take this little piece of wire and bend it back like this. I'm going to open up the loop just a little bit. Well, no, I'm going to go ahead and close this loop. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold the loop. So again, the the pliers are going straight across on that loop so that I don't lose that perfect circle that I've got started there. And then I'm going to use my flat nose pliers to grab a hold and wrap. And again, the great thing is it's not going to take a whole lot of wraps. I can do just a couple to till it meets the bead, like one or two, and then I'm set and good to go. So now I can take my cutters and I can get really close in here, trim that little excess wire, and then press that in. So again, if my loop, you can see there, it turned out almost perfect. I'm super, super happy about how that turned out. And Lynn, thank you very much. She said she loved my crawl instructions. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's do this two more times really quickly. So again, if I measure it on my ruler, I'm going to come down about three quarters of an inch. Okay, so about right here. And I'm going to turn the wire straight out at 90 degrees. Now, if your pliers or your loops do not come out perfect, believe me, I've had 20 plus years of practice on making loops, guys. Okay. So loops are practice, practice, practice. Okay, I'm going to take my little piece here and turn it back just like this so that I have that loop. So now I'm going to take my two loops that I already have done here and thread those on. And again, I'm going to put the pliers straight across just like this so that it holds that loop, my perfect loop. And then I'm going to use my little flat nose pliers here to wrap. And it's so funny. I can tell how used to I've got to using bent nose pliers because after grabbing these flat nose today, um, I feel like I'm all thumbs. So you get used to working with something. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, essentially, Angeline says, I've only had two years of practice. I stink at wire work, though. Oh, honey, I, I am telling you, um, it, it is, uh, it's practice. And I'll give you, stay around to the end of the video, and I'll tell you how I um, finally taught myself how to make loops. Okay, so now I've got a four, a six, so then this is my eight here. And again, I'm going to grab a hold, 
just right above there and turn. Um, and what that's going to do, that's going to keep that loop or that turn right close to the crystal. Because if you don't, and, which is totally okay, all right, it's completely fine. You'll just notice here the difference in the loop. So you can see how much more a bead takes up space there because of the amount of wraps that I've had to do to get that in place. So it's practice, practice, practice. All right. So again, I come out, turn, just like that. Okay. And now I'm going to grab a hold of the loop with my round nose pliers straight across. And then wrap this wire. Okay. And again, that's why I love these cutters. They make these cutters, I think, in three different sizes. And I have become obsessed with every size. Um, they even make, let me grab these just because I can see them right here from where I'm sitting. They even make these right here. These are their top of the lined ones that they have. Um, these are bead along and these actually will cut stainless steel. Um, so you could use this to cut like memory wire and stuff like that with. So I really, I like all of their cutters like these. Okay. So again, you see there. Pretty loop, nice loop. So final one here. Again, I'm going to measure this out just so that for video purposes here. So I'm going to come out about my three quarters of an inch here and grab a hold. And I'm going to make my loop. Okay, now I wanted to do this so that you can see how to fix if something if something happens here. So you can look at this one here and you can see that this is what I call the pelican head. All right. I've always called it this because this is the head. This is the beak. The head always has to be above the wire for it to turn out right. But you can look here. Mine looks a little, a little funky. So what I can do is I can put my pliers back in here and grab a hold and do like that. So that now that loop is more over its neck like it's supposed to be. And that'll just help help you a little bit. So I'm going to put the pliers back in there and have that little part. Thread the bead on. Grab a hold of the loop and wrap. And um, whoever it was who asked or was talking about um, your wire working, um, what I'm going to do too is I'm going to tell you, remind me before I get off here to tell you how I learned how to make my loops and also remind me to tell you the difference in a head pin that you were going to get from like a bead store, like a legit hobby store um, versus what you're going to get in a big box store as well. Remind me of that. And um We'll have some good conversation there for a minute. Let me see here. Grab a hold and wrap. So this is my 10 millimeter. So I have all of the beads on, which is amazing. And normally, if I'm not sitting here explaining this to you, I could legit make a pair of these in less than five minutes. Um, eight minutes at the max, <laughs> I think. Um, but there we go. Okay, so we have the beautiful earring complete. All right, again, if you want it shorter, you can leave off the top bead here. And so that way you just have like an eight, a six, and a four. You might could even put two fours here if you wanted to. But now I'm going to use one of these ear wires. I've already opened it up. So I open it and then. Make sure to close it there. And so now I have a completed earring. 
So again, if you're just joining us or you were a little late jumping on, the beadwork itself is gonna be almost two inches, all right? If I put the ear wire down here, you can see it's gonna be more like two and a half inches, okay? So this is the blue. <clears throat> then I have the crystal AB here, which I love it because it goes with everything. And then the pink. So, so uh, essentially, Angeline said she loves the cornflower blue. It's actually a really pretty dark blue. Really, really pretty for um, this time of year. I love it. Okay, so let me explain to you how I finally taught myself to make earrings. Okay, because I think it's going to be really helpful for some of you. Number one. Make sure that when you get headpins, that you purchase them from a legit bead store, like a hobby type store, okay? Or, you know, somewhere, uh, like I sell them in my store. Um, you can do like Potomac, uh, Cherry Tree Beads, um, Fire Mountain Gems, any of these places that are legit bead resources, okay? The metal that our head pins are made out of are a little bit different metal than what you're going to get in a big box store. When you go to a big box store, and I'm not bashing a big box store, okay? But when you go there, what happens is you get head pins that are a much denser metal, all right? So they're really hard to learn how to do earrings on. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying that you're going to have a lot easier time learning on a legit head pin from a bead resource, a bead seller who just specializes in bead stuff, okay? So it's my first tip for you. My second tip for you is that what I did is I bought myself a 50 pack of head pins and I did nothing but make a loop, put my bead on, make a loop. I cut the excess off then I use that excess to practice with the loops that I showed you how to do today, where I've got just one piece of wire that doesn't have a head on it, okay? <clears throat> so I did nothing with that 50 pack except for put a bead on, make a loop, whether it's a plain loop or a wrapped loop. If you do not know what that is, you can go to my website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. And what's going to happen is um, I have, well, not my website, my YouTube channel, which go to youtube.com forward slash off the beaded path. And I did a great series in 2020 called Back to Bead School. And it was all about earrings, learning how to make earrings. Okay. So if you don't know what a plain loop versus a wrap loop is, go back to that video because it's going to help you greatly. Okay. Um, but if you will buy yourself a 50 or a hundred pack of head pins and do nothing but wrap, practice, wrap, practice, wrap, practice, if you don't know how to make a hit or how to do a loop after that, then, then I, that is the biggest help that you can do to yourself is to practice. But <clears throat> I have a couple of questions. It looks like on here that I want to show. So what about using a wire looper tool? Um, you can definitely use a wire looper tool that will work. Uh, my biggest issue with the wire looper tool or even the tools that are so, so popular right now where it makes your loop for you, um, that little loop that that plier makes, I, I know there's a lot of people who use that right now, but the, that tool is expensive. Okay, it's a very expensive tool to use when you can do the same thing with your basic tools that you already have. And you, it's best to just practice and learn it because in the long run, it'll do yourself a world much better than just re relying on a tool all the time that's going to make your loops for you. Okay, so that is one thing you definitely, definitely want to think about. Um, it looks like I have here. What gauge head pin do you prefer? Uh, me personally, I like a thinner gauge head pin, which is going to be like, a, I believe it's a 21 gauge or 22 gauge head pin. Um, 
you can go down to even a 24. I just like a thinner head pin, honestly, because they're a lot easier to wrap. Uh, I can pretty much on a thinner head pin, I can wrap it really quickly. Whereas a thicker head pin, it takes a, uh, it takes just a second more, but um, I can wrap with a thinner head pin a lot easier. Um, essentially, Angeline just says, I, <laughs> I may sting at wire wrapping, but I prefer to make my own loops. Good for you. I love it. Yes, because like I said, <clears throat> They make all these amazing pliers that people have come out with. You can do things with, but I mean, you have all of these pliers in your stash probably already that you can just practice and do the same thing with. So my friends, uh, it looks like India says, could you use a three millimeter and two millimeter? Yes, you can. You definitely can go even smaller if you have them. Okay. Um, I would just definitely use um, that thin definitely thinner gauge wire to do that with. You just have to be very careful. Um, somebody said, plus I heard there is a huge learning curve with that looper tool as well. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Um, I have played with, I've carried them in my store and um, I just don't even carry them in my store anymore, honestly, um, just because, uh, because of that. So I wanted to give you guys a really quick heads up, uh, kind of what's coming down the pike. Uh, Monday, which is the 16th, I actually have a wonderful new video coming out with my friend Andrea Bieber of Andrea Bieber Designs. If you do not know her, Google her or go on Instagram and look her up. She does some beautiful wire work. Aha, you got me there. She is going to be teaching a beautiful wire cuff bracelet that is very, very easy to make. Okay. It's a lot of fun. Um, so pay attention to that. That's coming up Monday, the following Monday, which is going to be the 23rd. I'm going to be doing another filmed video that is going to be for a snowflake that you can make into an ornament. You can make it into a, something to put on a card because one of my goals for 2023 is to also show you guys projects that you can use with your beads that aren't necessarily jewelry. Because as much as we love to make jewelry, there is only so much we can make and wear. So I'm going to be showing you some different things you can do with your beads um, that aren't necessarily jewelry. And then the last video of the month, which is going to be the 30th, um, I'm going to try to do a video for one of our little miniature snowflakes. And in between then, you never know, you might get another live that we can have a good time with and hang out. Um, so guys, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me today. I have had a great time answering your questions. And remember, if you need to ask me a question about the project today, or beads about the project, anything, you can check out my website down there, off the beaded path beadstore.com, and you can hit the contact us there. You can email me off the beaded path at me, M -E .com, or you can call or text us at 2828. 2450306. So that way you can again call or text me, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have for that. So, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I hope you have a great day, a great holiday weekend. We have, I believe, Martin Luther King Day coming up on Monday. Um, so, everybody, have a wonderful weekend, and we will talk again soon. Bye bye.